Don't need them, huh? Hello, and welcome to the Power of Your Mind podcast, where we dive deep into the world of manifestation, the law of attraction, and the unlimited potential of your mind. You're listening to episode 274, Instant Manifestation. I'm Jim Kellner, your co-host and comedy hypnotist, and alongside me, we have the amazing Victoria Gallagher, our host of the show and renowned expert in the field of the law of attraction. Hello. Quick reminder to... Go ahead. Oh, I'm just saying hello. <laughs> oh, shoot. Sorry. I heard renowned <laughs> expert, and I had to just <laughs> chime in there and say hello. <laughs> Sorry I cut yeah. you off. <laughs> no problem. Uh, welcome to the show, Victoria. <laughs> Well, hello. Hello. I was going to try to do this without my glasses on, but I can't see you. <laughs> <laughs> and I was also going to try to change the view here so we could like kind of uh, be side by side for a minute. Um, because you did say, you I know, did say, on my me, yeah. side. <laughs> right. Alongside me, we have the amazing Victoria Gallagher. Here right. I am alongside <laughs> him now. I don't know if that changed right. the view for the um, for the world, but it changed my view. <laughs> Looks the same as it always looks to me, but I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully since I'm the one that's recording this on my screen, I wonder yeah. if it'll just be an interesting thing. I'll We'll find out when this actually goes live on, on uh, YouTube, if that actually changes it. Yeah. So anyway, I didn't mean to interrupt your wonderful introduction oh, no. to the show. No, please. I just, <laughs> just uh, yes, okay, I will continue <laughs> um, with a <laughs> quick reminder to subscribe to our podcast on your favorite platform so you never miss a hilarious and um, inspirational <laughs> and uh, educational episode. Victoria Gallagher is a best-selling author of The Practical Law of Attraction. She's the founder of HypnoCloud Apps hiptalk.com and be sure to check out her new believe hypnosis app launching soon or maybe it's already available maybe where, when you are listening. <laughs> oh i just as we speak i just got a new build uh sent to me oh, from the developers here's a little fantastic. opening oh the... look at that there's the opening Ooh. it's gonna it's gonna feature over i know i saw you were working late last night i think it was yeah featuring over a thousand audios yes Yes, you can see I I've done four minutes today, but that's just on this um empowerment. This this my my account is called empowerment. <laughs> gotcha. All right. Um. Yeah, we've got so many um amazing audios in this in this app, and more and more coming. You know what? Um, I'll just tell you one of the reasons yeah. why I've been so hard at work at. Um, creating a lot of the audios is because I divided the library out into multiple sections. So in the app, there's actually, um, in my old app, everything was just um, audios. So it didn't matter whether it was um, meditations or affirmations or um, hypnosis, it was all in the same library. Now there's like a little um, menu system at the top that actually has the um, hypnosis category, the meditation category, and the affirmation category. And then each of those are subdivided by, um, you know, uh, subcategories. And so mm -hmm. what I, what I realized when I did that, you know, like I might've only had like one session in this one uh, uh, affirmations subcategory of say like boost energy. I only had mm -hmm. one, um, you know, program in there. I don't want anybody to go into this new app and look at this lonely little <laughs> <laughs> section that only has like right. one little guy. So I have been working my fanny off um, to even to balance it out and to create um, enough of a balance in each of the categories and subcategories. And of course, you know, I'm wanting to hit that magical number of a thousand sessions. Um, and yeah. there were only just to give you an idea, there were only under under 500 sessions oh, wow. in um, HypnoCloud, even though I kept saying 500, it was always a goal of mine. And I had 500 recordings. They just weren't all in that app. So yeah. 
anyway, I've been working like the Dickens. What is it, Dickens? <laughs> I don't know. You're breaking out all of the old words today. <laughs> You're working your panty <laughs> off and it's working like the Dickens. <laughs> Welcome to 1950. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so um, we are so, so super close. Um, last week, um, so while we're recording this, today is actually the 22nd. It's supposed to air, this is supposed to air September 14th. Um, so this app will be more than launched by now. Um, and because we, I gave a very, very firm firm deadline um, to my developers a few weeks mm. back of July 1st. And mm. so we're going to see, there were, there are like three, there's, there's a list of about 50 things that <laughs> still, um, you know, need a little adjustment here and there, but some of them are like behind the scenes and some of them. Um, so some of them, the users would never actually know about, you know, that, that need to, you know, get fixed. Um, but, um, anyway, all that to say there were like three absolute complete deal breakers mm. last week that were just like, like this, you know, we can't go live if these things are still, you know, an issue, like for example, the player, this was an, an issue. Like, um, you, pl like, uh, you play the session and, um, you need your ringer on in order to hear the sound. Like that's not oh. acceptable you know yeah. um yeah. and it was cons inconsistent like they fixed it but then you know like you play it and then then it goes back and it reverts to the bad way that it was doing it so we mm -hmm. can't do that um and then you know just any other thing with playing the session was um it would go to sleep mm -hmm. and then it would just stop playing <laughs> so it's oh. like yeah like the whole reason that you play this is so that you know you don't have to fiddle with your phone while you're playing right. it you know these these yeah. are the kinds of frustrating little matters <laughs> that go on behind the scenes in developing an app and then the other um weird thing that they've just been really having the hardest time with is our uh, consecutive day streak count like mm. that just know like when that works right just know a lot of conversations <laughs> happened behind the scenes that uh, made that work so hopefully fingers crossed if those three things are completely fixed in the app the other things are so minor and small that we could probably launch the app within the next couple of weeks and that was just something i absolutely just set my intention for in a place where it didn't even seem possible to mm -hmm. like make that happen based on the past based on the way that it had been going i mean based based on the way that it had been going i'd be lucky if they fixed one minor little thing in a week um right and this you know last couple of weeks there's been a huge change and I'm just going to say, I totally take ownership of that because I changed my mindset about it. And I just basically said, it's just not even, it's just not even in the realm of possibility that this app will <laughs> not be d done by July 1st. And you know what? It's the, it's the 22nd. We have one more potential build between to this week's build and next week's build to get everything like how we need it to be in order for it to go live. And I feel really good about it. I feel really, really, really good about it. So that's why I guess maybe that's why I'm so punchy and happy and excited. <laughs> <laughs> All my hard work is finally, finally coming to reality. Yeah. Like I said, I mean, those are, those three are, they're kind of, uh, I can see what they're kind of like deal killers. I mean, you really have, those things need to be. Yeah. Yeah. You can't have people like play a session and then, um, you know, like they don't get their, their one, like I, I, oh, I listened for a day and then, yeah. um, and then we also have to make sure it works in reverse too, because, um, you know, it's supposed to go back to zero if you miss a day, right. of course, and yeah. people are not going to be a fan of like having that, you know, I mean, ha like not losing their streaks, like people that are, really um 
militant and, you know, about it and consistent about it, they're going to want to know that there is something at stake for not listening to it every day. You get your point, you know, your numbers taken away. So anyway, you know, those are, those are all super, super important things. Um, but you know, it's really exciting. Um, what's, you know, what's, what's getting ready to happen and, and, uh, and I'm just, I'm just really enjoying creating all the, the content. And, um, I've been also playing around with the recommendations because this app actually recommends based on your goals and your feelings. So it's going to recommend, um, you know, based on the goals and feelings that you select, it'll recommend the appropriate, um, sessions for, for you. Cause you know, it's kind of hard to like figure out, well, what do I listen to? There's a thousand sessions in here. Well, yeah you know, we'll have a little rec a special real recommended for you. And, um, that's actually been something I've been working on right now is just like, I've got my little goals and feelings matrix and I've been mm -hmm. testing the app myself just to like, okay, I'm going to select abundant and confidence and, um, see what, you know, see what it comes up with and just making sure that all the content is tagged right and all of that. So anyway, um, obviously I'm very excited about this. <laughs> yeah, right on. That's awesome. You know, and, uh, of course our topic today is sort of almost, I mean, we, uh, almost the exact opposite of what, of what you've been dealing with, because <laughs> this has been a, a long-term manifestation today. We're talking about, I want it now. It's yeah. instant, instant manifestation. So I, I got I mean, what is instant manifestation sounds like to totally counterintuitive total to what, opposite what of what um this app has yeah, <laughs> experienced. Right. okay done yeah <laughs> you know and I, i'm gonna i'm just gonna assert that you know a lot of the um the instant you know when you want to start well what is an instant manifestation um mm -hmm. so ultimately an instant manifestation is just kind of like the name suggests it is something that you manifest instantly um, on the spot. Mm -hmm. And people instantly manifest things all the time without even realizing it. Um, I mean, we, we can manifest positive things in an instant and we can manifest negative things in an instant. People uh, manifest um, how they feel. I mean, you can literally mm -hmm. instantly manifest uh, a, a state of uh, emotion um, just by going and thinking about something, you know, really sad or really anxious or really fearful, or you can also manifest the opposite. You can get, you know, you can feel really happy because you get excited about something. And so it, it really is about a shift in your perspective and a shift in your mindset. And it is all about really the power of now. It's really about being present in this moment and letting go of any preconceived old um, beliefs, notions, ideas, memories about how it used to be. Because when you start digging into how things were, it's hard to manifest anything different than that. So you got to let go of how it used to be. And you got to like, let go of the, the fear. And you've got to just like, be ultra, ultra present now. That's what instant manifestation. And, you know, people manifest things all the time. They manifest cars, uh, cars, <laughs> not cars. They manifest, <laughs> I was thinking, car. I was looking at a car in my head. And so I said car, I meant like parking spot. Ah, parking spots, little that's bit what I was thinking car. about. I was thinking about those people that, yeah, those people that can do that. I find that amazing. I have friends that can do that. You know, they, yeah. they, they will say, I always find a parking space. And every time I'm with them, they find a parking space really easily. Yeah. You know, and it, it really, it's, it's kind of a wacky thing that, you know, that you're able to, uh, to do that. Um, you can manifest, um, opportunities, you know, if, when you're open and awake and aware and present, um, there are so many more opportunities available to you, um, than when you're kind of like all over the place and making excuses and thinking about your past and thinking about how it's, you know, uh, you have one per uh, perceived conceived notion about how something comes to be. So it is, it's all about just a shift in awareness, a shift in consciousness, a shift in perspective, 
and um, you you can manifest bigger things, but you definitely are going to um, have a better opportunity with starting to, you know, look at the small things that you can manifest. So are you saying that this might be a great place to start? We start with doing the instant stuff, the small stuff, or, or is, or is inst or are you saying that instant, I think I misunderstood. Never mind. I think you're, what you're saying is if you want to start manifesting big things in the moment instantly, you got to start with the small stuff. Exactly. Get yeah. the parking spot, then maybe you get the car. <laughs> yeah. Like the bigger things, um, you know, I definitely, either way, whether it's an instant or a long-term uh, manifestation, and obviously, I mean, everybody wants everything now, now, now. Um, of course. But, you know, it, it is just to say that it, it happens a little bit differently um, you know, with manifesting like normally, it's all about um, working on your personal development, working on uh, shifting all of your um, your energy, your thoughts, your feelings, your vibration, your um, actions, all of that into a place where you can manifest bigger and better things. With instant manifestation, it's something you can do on the fly. You can instantly shift into a new awareness that includes the thing you know that you're you're manifesting so it's a little bit more of an advanced approach to manifesting it's definitely more advanced than longer term you know longer term is more for beginners instant gotcha. manifestation is a little bit more for your more advanced and it makes me wonder because I had a friend, um, I mean, years ago, I haven't seen him in years, but I kind of, he's an older, older guy. And I, I can't imagine him ever like the whole law of attraction thing. I don't, I don't believe that he, that was anywhere in his realm of, of things that he would think about, talk about, believe in or anything like that. Mm -hmm. And yet he got the parking spots and he, he knew he could get a parking spot all the time. So do you find there's maybe a, 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 Maybe it's a little bit easier to grasp for people that aren't so maybe woo woo. Maybe they can grasp the the instant in, more easily. Or was he actually using the law of a manifestation, you know, a law of attraction without even maybe knowing he was in the beginning for bigger things? Because well, he's pretty wealthy too. Yeah, I mean, most people are using law of attraction manifest manifesting without even realizing it, and it you know it's really. Um, the difference between the people who manifest things um, using law of attraction that aren't realizing it and those who, who do, I mean, so, you know, is, is it, is the awareness and the, mm -hmm. and the seeking to understand and the learning how it works and, you know, really trying to um, make sense of like why um, good things happen to you or bad things happen to you more frequently than other things. And so with the people, but everybody's using it, they may not right. believe I mean, yeah. in it, you know, and they yeah. may not uh, recognize that that's what they're doing. Some people are a little bit more natural um, manifestors. They're just born maybe more natural, you know, maybe they, they had the advantage of having their parents speak to them, um, in ways, or they just had, um, an easier time with things. So they manifest better things much more easily. Just the opposite is true, you know, for people who, you know, were really told, oh, you know, money's the root of all evils. You're never going to amount to anything. You're going to stay fat the rest of your life, or they were made fun of and they never dealt with their issues. And so they find themselves always, you know, um, having hard luck and yeah. constantly attracting bad things. And it's really just, um, you know, it's like, are you going to get like, is everything going to start going your way a hundred percent of the time once you learn how to manifest? Absolutely not. I mean, you know, we've seen how the great, you know, Queen of Manifesting Victoria has had a little bit of a difficult time this year with manifesting probably the, you know, best, but you know, there are some things that just take time. And I think a lot of it really also um, comes down to how much energy you put on something um, with the mm -hmm. instant manifestations that we're talking about today is the, I think one of the key ingredients to instant manifestation, I'm going to say is the subtleness. 
in mm. your energy and the lightness in your energy, like not putting so much energy on it and mm. really like, you know, it's, it's a lighter, freer energy in, in, and when you think of something as lighter, something lighter goes faster. And so, um, when you have a little bit less attachment to something, um, and a little bit less energy about it, less dense energy, you have a little bit freer, lighter energy about it. Things are just going to go much quicker, quick, much, much, much more quickly. I should actually <laughs> take some of those, make some bloopers out of it. You, the, uh, oh, yeah. I've been doing a lot of recording now. I do. I will say I am pretty perfect <laughs> when it comes to making uh, my recordings. I I can record one take like 80% of the time. That's awesome. Yeah. And it saves a lot of time in the studio, like literally no cuts, no edits, just fade the front, fade the back, put a little music on it, fade it out. I'm done. And Boom. so it's, pretty um pretty good to have done this as many times as I've done it um but I do have those few uh little moments where it's like ah oh, the tongue is just not working right today <laughs> well so how can people out there so I mean I know um we all I mean, we all want it now so how yeah. could somebody begin how could they begin to start applying this power of instant manifestation well so I I t think about like really um, starting with the small stuff, you know, start yeah. thinking about um, because it, it all is like, you got to be able to crawl before you can walk and you got to be able to walk before you can run. And so I always, always suggest just start with a small stuff and like the moment um, you start obsessing about um any kind of manifestation you got to stop right there um mm -hmm. because that's you're you're going to chase it away when you start obsessing and so that's the really the first thing that you really want to work on yourself is to get control over the mind um mm -hmm. Because, you know, when people say, I can't stop thinking about it, I can't let it go, I can't uh, stop it, you know, I can't get, um, release the attachment, I can't not be obsessed, how do I not be obsessed with this thing? Well, mm. it's your mind, you know, it's your mind, you can train it to do whatever you want it to do. And if you are obsessed with something it's not going to be an instant manifestation and so mm -hmm. what you have to train your mind to do and this happens by being disciplined um and doing your meditation every day or doing your moments of silence doing something to where you re repeatedly change your mind you know, and you have, and that's what you do when you go into meditation. A lot of people think when you go into meditation that you're, it's all, you're all going to just be blissed out and having some kind of spiritual, um, experience. And that happens occasionally, but for the most part, that's not what meditation is. Meditation is sitting there and disciplining your mind um, you know, when you go into like silent, uh, meditation, it's disciplining the mind so that you can get more control over your thoughts so that you can be present. Cause when you're thinking, as soon as you start thinking, you're normally not present. You're normally in the future thinking about, Oh, I, I sure hope this happens, you know, I, I, and, or what if this happens and, you know, you're getting freaked out, you know, and you're thinking about the thing that you don't want to happen or you're, you know, um, longing for the thing that you do want to happen or you're in the past and you're like, this always happens. Well, if you're saying this always happens, it never, ha never works out for me. You're, you're using, resources from the past to create your future. And so, um, 
we, we had to learn how to be present because everything ultimately, that's where all your power is. I mean, you heard of Eckhart Tolle that, mm -hmm. um, you know, wrote the power of now it is mm -hmm. about now everything is happening right now. It's all happening right now. And, and we can shift our reality literally in a moment, in a flash, um, by letting go of what we are expecting our reality to be. Ooh, I like that. We can shift yeah. our reality in a moment by just allowing ourselves to, um, to, to let go of the reality that we expect, you know, the, to, that we are expecting from the past mm -hmm. that we're expecting based on a, um, pre-designed way of thinking that we have, you know, been thinking, um, over and over again. Um, so anyway, the bottom line is you got to let go. You got to let go. You got to train your mind to be focused and present, um, in this moment. Gotcha. Now, do you have any, uh, personal examples, um, with you yourself or clients or friends or. Yeah, I like definitely. Um, a couple of small examples. One just happened kind of recently. So Steve and I, uh, went to Ireland. Um, we just had an amazing, amazing time. And, you know, I don't, I don't know if, um, you remember if our, um, fans, our uh, listeners will remember. Um, but, you know, I just took off about 25 pounds um, before mm -hmm. we went and I still have about another 10 pounds to hit my goal weight. So of course, you know, going to Ireland for two and a half weeks, um, you know, there's, you're subject to uh, definitely uh, putting on the, you know, putting the weight back on and when we were there, I mean, I literally had uh, yummy dessert every single day, if not twice. Like they wow. always, we, we <laughs> ate out every day and they always uh -huh. had these wonderful um, pastry tarts and stuff like that. It's like my favorite kind of dessert. Like uh, that's not something I can easily say no to. And um, you know, just that those flaky pastries with a little mm. bit of, you know, oh, yeah. yummy cherry or raspberry something yeah. in the middle. Oh man, that was just like I would have something like that every day. And so <laughs> while I was there, I'm like, you know, um, the best I can hope for when I get back, <laughs> you know, is that maybe I won't gain, um, any more than five pounds and I'd be mm. happy with that. So I fully yeah. expected and anticipated based on past experience, based on knowing me, based on knowing my body, this is, this is a re this is probably a reality. I mean, pretty easily, you know? And so anyway, um, waited a couple of days after we got back before I weighed myself and, um, cause I hadn't even had a chance to like go to the gym and sweat everything out you know I've got, like I gotta like when I weigh myself and it's all relative because it's always the same consistent way every time but whenever I weigh myself it is like I have sweat and peed every ounce of fluid I could possibly get out of me you know what I mean it's like <laughs> yeah it might be a little lying to myself about the reality but it's still all <laughs> relative it's still plus or minus whatever it was from the day before the week before all of that right and um so anyway here um the first time I went to the um I, I went out I went I walked to our gym you know it's about a mile away I walked to our gym out in the hot sun got on the stair climber thing, um, for about 30 minutes, walked back and on my walk back, I told myself, I said, okay, I'm going to say it's the day I'm going to weigh myself <laughs> and I'm going to get on that scale. And I don't care what anybody knows about my weight. Um, I'm not one of those people that has to hide it. Um, so I said, um, cause so, so I had the, the day I left, I was 135 pounds. So my goal weight is 124. Um, and so the day I left, um, I was 130 pounds, 35 pounds. And I said, okay, I'm going to get on a scale. It's going to be 135 or less, 135 or less, 135 or less. And, you know, and then I'm like, oh wait, no, it could be 134. 
could be 133. And I like, literally mm. I'm saying this out loud. I like, I don't even care mm. if somebody walked by me, you know, it's like they, you know, they're like, what are these numbers? <laughs> <laughs> and I could see it. I could see the scale. I could see the 133, 134. I couldn't even like see even 135 or like seeing it, seeing it, seeing it. And mm. So I, I get home and I take off all my clothes, go to the bathroom one more time, <laughs> get on the scale. 133.6. Whoa. It made no sense in the world. There's no reason <laughs> why I could go to Ireland, eat all that right. great food. You know, I mean, I, wow. I kept myself pretty active, but no more active than I normally am. Yeah. And for me to come back and weigh that, that was an instant manifestation. <laughs> it was an absolute. And I just only came up with the idea to weigh that yeah. amount, you know, and then I just kind of like, I felt it. I got excited mm -hmm. about it. I said, this is how much I'm going to weigh. And I weighed that 100% wow. exactly on the nose what it was, the numbers, the 133 that I said I wanted to weigh. That's an instant That's manifestation awesome. right there. Wow. No kidding. That's, that is that's like wild. transforming your reality. You know what I mean? It's like complete yeah. shifting of a reality. Like, because that's, you know, I, anyway, so I felt that. So, you know, and other times that, um, I've done that with, um, Oh, like, you know, when, when Steve and I have been in the middle of like, you know, a bad, uh, rough time and, um, I have instant and, you know, and it's like it, at this moment is kind of like um, it's kind of like vague who should say sorry first or who should speak first or, you know, I don't know yeah. if you've been in that situation yet with May. Sure. I mean, we, you know, we've been together for, you know, almost 20 yeah. years now. So it's like we've, yeah. we've been through the ringer. Um, and you know, so we kind of know how to read each other and what's going to happen, what normally happens. And normally, you know, this was just a little bit outside of the norm for him to come and apologize to me like this instantly. And cause there was this one night, I just remember where I just, you know, like, I just really need for him to like, before he even tries to speak to me again, I just really need him to text me an apology and I got it by the morning, like literally mm. I woke up in the morning and on my phone, I was like, I'm sorry. And, wow. and it didn't even like, I mean, yeah, I, I, he owed me an apology, but it was out of his character normally to just, you know, do that without some long five hour conversation about why he was so wrong. <laughs> 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 um first you know to to have to go through all that you know it was it was easy and effortless i just got it and so i feel like that that was just another like i i literally i went and kind of meditated on that for a little while um visualized my phone saying that um you know kind of connected with with him mentally in my mind and said, you're going to say, you're going to say you're sorry, you know, <laughs> and like, you know, like not, you know, like physically, but just like mentally, you know, yeah. and, and it happened. So th those are just like a couple like little things. Um, I've found money in my wallet that I needed in the moment that I know wasn't there. And um, I found my cat that I thought was lost. Um, and you know, and it was just like, it, it, it's, it's like a reality shift. It's like you're, you are shift. That's what in, in my mind, a little bit about what instant manifestation really actually is. It's shifting into a different reality zone. Hmm. And I know that might sound a little woo woo, but that is about as woo, -woo instant manifestation is about as woo woo as it all gets. And it's not an area that I spent a lot of time educating people about because I, you know, like I, I'm known for my book, Practical Law of Attraction and teaching people the practical steps. This isn't that practical. This is more advanced stuff, but it does exist. And, you know, it's out there for the people who want to, 
you know, experiment. Yeah. So I would just like to say, uh, first off, that there's there's never any vagueness about who needs to apologize between me and my. It's it's always me. Um, <laughs> it's it's always my fault. Um, I mean, genuinely, it really is. She's she's amazing. Um, so far, you know, we're still waiting. So hold my breath, though. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but um you know what i so i yeah you kind of touched on this but i i do find that you know people you know that are maybe a little bit more skeptical might you know they're, they're going to have even more difficulty with the whole idea of instant manifestation than just regular manifestation seems more magical what would you say to them you know to be honest i don't really spend a whole lot of time um trying to convince you know, people yeah. of, you know, that these things work. Um, I don't find that that really works too well to try to convince people um, because it's like, you know, you either, you either want to learn about these things um, or, or you don't. But what yeah. I will say to somebody who's skeptical um, about just the whole idea of law of attraction and manifestation is really just like, what do you have to lose by, um, thinking, you know, um, uh, you know, thinking in a more positive way, um, by expecting that if you, uh, think in a more positive way that you're going to be able to change your reality, like, what do you really have to lose? Um, mm -hmm. and I guess some people feel like, well, I don't want to get my hopes up for something, mm -hmm that will never come to pass. And I say, well, why, um, why don't, why not like spend like literally if you, you spend 90% of your time expecting the worst and probably creating the worst, because that's what you expect. If you, ex you know, if you're expecting bad things to happen more, it's, you have a better chance that bad things are going to happen. If you expect good things to happen, you have a better chance that good things are going to happen. So if for the rare chance that it may not happen, and for the tiny little band-aid that you might have to peel off, you know, when you come to some terms that, okay, it's not going to happen. And when do we even decide that it's not going to happen? Like you're making that decision. You're choosing that your manifestation isn't going to happen because you've given it an a, assigned amount of time in order for it to happen. Mm -hmm. So, um, or, you know, maybe, you, you know, there's something that you still uh, need to learn about or, or advance in your uh, mind, your emotions, your actions, you haven't just gotten yourself into that aligned state. So really, one, I don't really try and convince a lot of people. It's like, you know, live and let live. Um, but for the person who I think is on the fence about it and, you know, it's like they might um, be open to uh, discovering a new way, say, you know, give it, give it a try. What do you really have to lose? Yeah, it's true. What are some, uh, what are some limitations um, to instant manifestation? Um, I think probably one of the biggest limitations is, is the amount of time that people perceive a, 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 an instant manifestation should happen. So if you say, okay, well, I'm going to manifest this thing in 24 hours mm, and okay. you, um, 24 hours starts to <laughs> come upon you, mm. um, what's going to happen with the instant manifestation versus something where you're more flexible and open to it manifesting whenever, um, the limitation there is that the more time that goes by, the more it's going to probably make you feel a sense of urgency and anxiety and, mm -hmm. um, and doubt that it's, there's a lot, lot more chance of doubt with your, um, you know, with, with instant manifestation, um, you're just not, you know, not going to give it, you're not giving it the appropriate amount of time. So, you know, it, it works in some cases It doesn't, you know, it's not all, it's not a hard and fast, like, 
rule that you can just do this with everything all the time, every time. It happens kind of like when you've gotten to a place um, where you're subtle and you know how to shift your reality, you know how to shift your thinking into like, just it's, it's almost like, it's almost like the other reality of where you're thinking normally lies just no longer exists. And you let go of that and you are instantly able to like almost teleport yourself into a new reality. Only you're not really teleporting. Um, you're just shifting your perspective and being open to the occurrence of this manifestation. But anyway, you know, it's the time. It's really the time is the biggest um, limitation. Well, you know what I'm thinking? I'm, I'm thinking, you know, if we're talking about instant kind of things, you know, you and I, of course, with hypnosis, we're working with the uh, subconscious a lot. Is there a way that we could instantly change that for ourselves or with clients? You can, um, you know, with, with the subconscious, some, sometimes change can happen in an instant. And the, um, the, the situation with the subconscious is usually, um, when you have like a really profound heightened emotional experience Mm -hmm. that can instantly change, uh, the subconscious, Another way that you can instantly change the subconscious is to expose yourself to new realities that you were not aware of um, before. And and cre- you can create a new belief system almost on the spot by introducing new information um, like so-and-so just did this, you know? And it it's almost like what happens... Um, is the limiting belief that we we used to have literally goes away. It's like when, uh, say when Robert Bannister, um, you know, crossed the, uh, beat the four minute mile. So when he beat the four minute mile before that, everyone had a limiting belief about how fast Mm -hmm. you could run a mile. Everyone had that That same exact limiting belief. But as soon as you got new information introduced, instantly another person was able to manifest being able to beat the four minute mile when they could never do that before. And so exposing yourself to brand, brand new information that you've never had before is another way to do that. And so how, how can you get that information? Well, you can do research, you can find, so you want to like, look for reasons why, uh, something is possible. So many people spend Mm -hmm. more time trying to figure out how it's not possible, um, Mm -hmm. and shooting it down and what's the worst that could happen. Well, what's the best that could happen? How can I, you know, and that, that can instantly shift the, uh, the subconscious. Great. Um, so the folks out there that want to head over to the drive through uh, manifestation, do you have any uh, <laughs> manifestation center? Um, do, you, do you have any final advice for them? I, I would say the biggest advice um, that I could give is, you know, uh, to number one, uh, start small. Um, number two, look for proof. Go Start to actually look at all the um way all the all the ways that your manifestation could happen in an instant like even just um make a little journal about and start writing down like what are a hundred different ways that that this could potentially happen quickly um now you know what's going to happen Maybe that particular thing, because writing down a hundred ways is not something happening necessarily in an instant, but what it's doing is it's building the creative resources in your mind to, you know, next time, you know, it's like, oh, I've got this idea. I've got this idea. I've got this idea. And you're training the mind to um, associate quickness um, with whatever it is that comes to your mind. 
Whereas, you know, the way people normally think about things is like, oh, it's going to take a long time. Um, well, if you start to like, just train your mind to this could happen quickly. What are some ways that this could happen quickly and start to get curious about those ways? Um, that's another thing. And then of course I strongly recommend, you know, training your mind, um, through hypnosis, through affirmations, through visualization, through, uh, doing silent meditation every day. Um, to be more aware, more open and, um, and believe in your ability, the power of your mind, um, that you can, you can manifest things and you can do so quickly. And it's a limiting belief that it has to take a long time. Cool. Well, thanks a lot, Victoria. A lot of good stuff there. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Jim. Um, and thank you listeners, uh, for tuning in to, the Power of Your Mind podcast. Hope you found it informative and inspiring. Please be sure to share this podcast uh, with your friends, with your family. Um, don't forget to subscribe and leave us a review. Um, tune in next week for another inspiring episode. And until then, keep using the power of your mind to reach your goals and live your best life of abundance and joy. Bye now.